right now on Healthy Montgomery Family Checkup. It's been called the toughest job you'll ever love, but for all its rewards, motherhood also comes with a lot of worry. Yeah, for me, I, I want to know just to be prepared so I know what to expect. Infant screening, the pros, the cons, and the amazing medical advances that can correct problems even before your baby is born. Plus, he hurt every single time. The pain of breastfeeding. Now, a simple, quick procedure could help millions of women suffering through what should be a special bonding time with their babies. And nearly one-fifth of American kids are overweight. The key to tackling the dangerous epidemic of obesity. All this and much more on this edition of Healthy Montgomery Family Checkup. Hi, I'm Kathy Fowler, and welcome to the second fall edition of Healthy Montgomery Family Checkup. Your pregnancy, a time of joy and plenty of decisions. How do you know if your baby is healthy? What tests are available to find out? Are there risks? And how much information is too much? For me, I, I want to know just to be prepared so I know what to expect. Genetic counseling could be helpful really for any woman. Perinatologist Dr. Wayne Kramer offers prenatal screening and genetic counseling from several offices all over Montgomery County before and during your pregnancy. Testing now for any pregnant patient constitutes doing a first trimester screen, which means doing a ultrasound at 12 weeks, combining this with a blood test, which measures proteins released from the placenta, which you can actually measure in maternal blood. Combining this with this new test gives us about a 99.9% chance of telling the mother whether the baby has Down syndrome or not. We had genetic counseling first where they talked about chromosomal disorders and other kinds of issues you might have when your baby's born. Many tests are simple and won't harm you or your unborn child. It also prevents you from doing invasive testing such as CVS or amniocentesis which could result in fetal loss of a normal baby. For many patients, that can be a struggle, trying to figure out, well, do I really want this information? And if so, is it worth the risk of miscarriage? Getting an ultrasound even gives you a first glimpse of your baby. Oh, we saw the baby jumping, which was fun. Yeah. There's been new labs and new companies that have developed tests that we're trying to get specific genetic information about the baby now non-invasively. Some tests are available prior to conception. Before anybody gets pregnant, sit down with your partner, spouse, whoever it is, and discuss your genetic history. There are certain diseases that run in families that can be predicted. If you're thinking about having a future pregnancy and want to know potentially what some genetic risks may be or want to undergo some genetic testing prior to pregnancy, that's always a good time. Others screen for particular diseases in utero. It is really advancing and reducing the risk of fetal abnormality, fetal um, brain injury, a time of delivery, uh, unknown structural defects being delivered, uh, discovered at time of delivery, the shock of having an unknown baby with Down syndrome, et cetera, delivery. So it really, and it changes the way we manage these pregnancies. Giving doctors a jump start on any issues your child may develop. Some of the cardiac anomalies are being treated in the womb already. There is fetal surgery in very specialized centers that they can operate on the baby in utero. As always, maintaining a healthy lifestyle even before you get pregnant remains key to preventing many childhood diseases. If you are overweight and considering pregnancy, rather go and exercise, try and lose weight before you get pregnant. Number one, it increases your chance of getting pregnant, but number two, reduces the fetal effects. Yeah, I mean, for me, it makes no difference because, you know, we don't, I don't, I mean, I don't believe in abortion, and so whatever happens, happens. Right now, five million women suffer from a condition that can make it difficult, if not impossible, to get pregnant. Dr. Shabnam Dadgar, a primary care physician who specializes in minimally invasive surgery and gynecology care in Rockville, Maryland, joins us now to talk about endometriosis. Okay, so I think most parents know that they should be sending their kids to the pediatrician, but maybe parents don't know at what age should they take their daughter to the gynecologist. At what age is that? Well, American Obstetric and Gynecology uh, Association recommends the first gynecological visit of a teenager should be between age 13 and 15. This visits between age 13 and 15 is solely to establish a relationship 
and just make sure that their, uh, you know, their physical appearances, uh, as far as the growth and maturation, isn't up to par. And also give them counseling. And I think counseling is really important because a lot of these girls are at that age group that they're gonna start having risky behaviors, inquiring infections, pregnancy. And the one more important thing is the vaccine, vaccinations. When the HPV vaccine first came out, it was a little bit controversial. Uh, what are the recommendations now? And what do you tell parents about getting vaccinated, getting your child vaccinated? I think it's the greatest vaccine we've ever had. Uh, just think about it. We have a vaccine that is gonna prevent cancer because now we know HPV is a cause of all these cancers, anal cancer, throat cancer, oral cancer, pharyngeal cancer, and extra, female external genitalia cancer. Uh, girls start between age nine and 26. It's three dose vaccine, um, get first month, second month, and then six months from the time you've received the first vaccine. Now, we don't know if there is need for booster, which means, uh, you know, uh, after five years, 10 years, uh, you know, the immunity to the virus decreases and they need another booster. That is uh, under investigation. Coming up, the Dirty Dozen. Which foods you should always buy organic and when it's safe to buy the regular variety produce. Plus, I just didn't like the way I looked at all. I looked horrible. Fighting the $100 billion epidemic that's making our kids sick. Stay with us. Get more information and interviews at mymcmedia.org slash health. If you could see anything in the world, what would it be? I'd love to see Paris. I like to see cupcakes falling from the sky. My daughter, married and happy. I want to see things the way I used to. Chances are, someone you love may one day be affected by macular degeneration or glaucoma. Log on to seeabettertomorrow.org or call 1-800-437-2423 to learn about glaucoma and macular degeneration. Call 1-800-437-2423 or log on to seeabettertomorrow.org. I just want to see more of the things I love. breastfeeding their babies than ever before, but it's not always a magical experience. Millions of women cope with pain, bleeding, and bruising, but they push on because they know it's best for their baby. But now one doctor has found a quick way to make breastfeeding easier for women. Casey Taylor reports. It's a procedure that takes a few minutes. He loves to eat but it will save mom Shani Hayden from months of pain. I would have thought it was normal. I would have thought that breastfeeding is supposed to be painful, but it's not. Dr. Earl Harley puts a little topical anesthetic in Devin's mouth and then snips the membrane under the tongue called the frenulum. It loosens and lengthens the tongue so he can latch on without hurting mom. Simply just a couple snips and it releases the tongue. It's very simple. It takes a matter of a minute, two minutes at the most. The goal? Prevent more moms from giving up on breastfeeding. A recent survey shows breastfeeding in the U.S. is at an all-time high. 77% of new moms are doing it, compared to 60% 15 years ago. It's really one of the easiest ways parents can, mothers can choose to make a tremendous difference in their baby's health. Studies show breastfed babies have a lower risk of ear and respiratory infections, obesity, diabetes, and even cancer compared to formula-fed infants. It could also help moms years later. New research shows postmenopausal women who breastfed were 10% less likely to have a heart attack or stroke and had lower risk of diabetes and high cholesterol. He's fine and he's laughing. Are you laughing? Yes. <laughs> he seems very comfortable now. Making motherhood healthier and less painful starting on day one. I'm Casey Taylor reporting. 
When you're breastfeeding, everything you eat and drink is passed along to your precious baby, leading some new moms to worry about pesticides on the produce they eat. But buying organic can be costly, and not all chemical-free veggies are created equal. Karen Owak has the lowdown on the Dirty Dozen. Many shoppers prefer the organic produce to reduce their exposure to chemical pesticides, but organics can be a little bit more costly. If you're on a tight budget, today I'll show you which organic foods are worth the extra money. Fruits consistently top the list of produce that are most contaminated by pesticides. Buying pesticide-free produce is the best choice, but maybe unavailable or more expensive. By knowing when to buy organic and when it's smart to buy conventional, you can save yourself some money. Studies suggest that there are no nutritional differences between produce grown organically and those grown conventionally with pesticides. However, a growing number of scientists agree that the chemical pesticides designed to kill insects and a variety of fungus on fruits and vegetables can have lasting effects on your health. Even small doses can damage living cells and are linked to toxic effects. Always clean your produce before eating, cutting, or cooking to remove soil particles and possible bacteria, viruses, or parasites. Wash them under cold water and scrub gently with a natural bristle brush. The use of a soap is optional. Be sure not to leave your produce soaking in water though as that dissolves their valuable water-soluble nutrients. Rinse well and dry with a clean towel to help reduce bacteria that may still be present. Some fruits and vegetables are more heavily sprayed than others. The most pesticide contaminated fruits and vegetables are known as the dirty dozen, and it's best to buy organic if they're one of these 12. Peaches were tested to be the most contaminated, followed by apples, bell peppers, celery, nectarines, strawberries, cherries, kale, lettuce, imported grapes, carrots, and pears. Consider buying organic when shopping for these items. To save money, buy conventionally farmed produce if they're the least pesticide contaminated fruits and vegetables, also known as the Clean 15. Topping the list are onions, avocados, corn, pineapple, and mango, followed by asparagus, frozen sweet peas, kiwi, cabbage, eggplant, and finally papaya, watermelon, broccoli, tomatoes, and sweet potatoes. Healthy eating habits start early, and never has it been more critical to start our children off on the right foot. Obesity now affects 17% of all children and adolescents in the U.S. That's triple the rate from just a generation ago. And the financial cost to society is a staggering $100 million each year. Ramon Kalali shows us the new brand of obesity education that's taking root across the country. This treadmill saved David Duran's life. So did these weights and extra exercise. Two years ago, at 12 years old and weighing 187 pounds, doctors told David he was way too heavy. It was just this much more to go, and then I would have been diabetic. 20% of all youngsters in the U.S. are obese, and two-thirds will become obese adults, which may lead to hypertension, stroke, and diabetes. It was just like... The fear of diabetes, I, I didn't know what it was, but I knew it wasn't good. It's important to focus on changing that behavior. Virginia Commonwealth University's Daphne Bryan runs their novel Teens program. At-risk kids like David and their families meet with nutritionists and exercise scientists for two years. Doctors say whole family education boosts immersion and drives home key lessons on health. The activity is just not there anymore. There's more um, screen time than running and playing time. To date, all graduates have lowered their cholesterol and blood pressure levels. Nationally, studies show 73% of similar programs have positive results. So I started coming in and it was like, hey, I lost a pound. Next day, hey, I lost another one. David's sister Melitza went from 216 pounds to 184 in two years. Feels like you can just take on the world anything. David himself lost 47 pounds and staved off diabetes. He hopes this country's youngsters are paying attention. Ramin Khalili reporting. We hope this edition of Healthy Montgomery Family Checkup was educational and informative to you. For more information on these and other health-related topics, simply visit one of these websites. We'll be back next time. Until then, 
I'm Kathy Fowler. Stay healthy, Montgomery.